I went to school all right, mm -hmm. but because my dad couldn't afford the fees, mm -hmm. I'm always they always sack me from school. Mm. So I come home and I have no option but to room with this couple. Yeah. Things were getting better when I was in junior high school, mm. you know. So I sat at the electrical shop and these guys would come sit beside me at the electrical shop mm -hmm. and they'll be telling me about how they've been chasing this girl. They tell me about how they went to sleep with a girl. So they were exposing me to sexual content and they were playing pornographic content beside me in the shop and because i was a kid i didn't really have the strong moral values mm -hmm. so i was actually watching and it was, uh, it was i was watching I missed out on so many things i missed out on um quality education at the basic level mm -hmm. i missed out on that i missed out on being able to um have fun like a kid like you know how you had a pc at home you could play games at some point i knew i had the pc but i was just brief mm -hmm. a greater part of my teenage life i didn't play computer games mm -hmm. at some point i even had to stand behind a neighbor's window to watch movie in the night wow. so i missed out on all these the issue is not actually where you are coming from mm -hmm. the issue is where you are going to hello everyone welcome back to our youtube channel this is the riri and louis podcast hello <laughs> so my name is riri and i have with me louis louis is here all the time and will always be here all the time okay all right i love that i don't know are you yes i am oh okay <laughs> All right, so let's get straight into today's podcast. Um, today we're going to be talking about our lives as um, as a Christian teenager. Um, some of the things that we feel like we missed out growing up, uh, you know, as a Christian, um, and what is what are we doing now to right some of the wrongs that we did as a teenager, and what advice would you give to our younger selves? Yeah. So and also the advice will want to pass out to um, teenagers in our present time you know because in our present time you know we have technology things have changed you know um, so we believe we have some experiences that mm. we could share with the current teenagers and mm -hmm. um, help them in their life as teenagers yeah exactly so but give me a general description of how your teenage life was. If you could describe it in one word, what word would that be? And then after, just give us a little bit about like how you grew up, where you spend your teenage life, school life, and just like economic status as well. Yeah, um, in one word, I would say my teenage life was, um, it was brief. Brief? Yeah, it was brief. I know... Teenage is actually the age that has a teen in it, mm -hmm. basically. So, yeah. starting from 13 yeah. to 19. Mm -hmm. And I said it was brief because I still remember when I was 13 years and I still remember when I was 19 years. Oh. But I don't remember how fast it was from 13 to 19. Okay. So, that's how quick time flies, you know. Yeah. Um, so, that's what I meant by brief. And um, I remember starting um, my years in my 30s, if I want to put it that way. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a community called, um, I don't know if you know Ghana really well, but it's called um, Banana Inn. Yeah, I don't know that area. Okay. Um, Banana Inn. Yeah. Sukura. Okay, so these are the places I spent my years in my my teenage years. I'll put it that way. Okay. And Dansuman Beach Road. So okay. these are the three areas I spent okay. my life as teenager, as a okay. teenager. So um, can you describe how the place was like? Well, none of these places are um, real estates. They are all slums, slummy areas. 
it's like full of slums. Okay. Middle class people. You find middle? middle class people in there. Oh. Yeah, you find middle class people in there because in the in the community you have people that have beautiful houses they've built. Oh, you found okay. what classes class people in there and you find unemployed people in there it's a mix of mixture of different people with different um, economic background and all that you know so okay. we happen to be in the lua class mm -hmm. that's where my family is that's where i'll put my family mm -hmm. um so we didn't really have the best of everything mm -hmm. i've got friends who were um kubalos you know what Kubala is? All right, so today I'm going to tell you. You give me a lot of the terms. terms. Yeah. yeah. So that people in Ghana, people listening from Ghana, would relate and mm -hmm. um, um, get what I'm trying to say. So I I roomed with the Kubalos, and um, so I first of all lived in Banana Inn, and I moved to Sukura, and I moved to Dansuman Beach Road. Mm hmm. So while I spent my my years in Banana Inn, I roamed with the Kobolos. When I went to Sukura, I also roamed with the Kobolos. But when I moved to Basman Beach Road, I didn't go out with the Kobolos, right? I had a mm -hmm. different set of friends, different mm -hmm. exposure, and that's what made me who I am today. Mm -hmm. But taking you back to my, my life as um, a teenager in Banana Inn, uh, I went to school all right, mm -hmm. but because my dad couldn't afford the fees, mm -hmm. I'm always they always sack me from school. Mm. So I come home and I have no option but to room with this Kubolos. Yeah. So that's how come I happen to be with the Kubolos. I had oh, no okay. option because I was home bored doing nothing. Yeah. And these guys who always come past my house and you just join them. We join them, we play football, then we room about. I'll tell you more about <laughs> that in the in the in the conversation. Bro, but that's yeah. summary. In summary, that's the kind of friends I hung out with. Um educational status. I already said it. We were part of the lower class people. Um, it was hard for my dad to pay my fees. Mm. And um, yeah, it wasn't too good mm. in, in, in those days. It wasn't too good. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's that about me. How about mm. you? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Um, Jeez, because okay. mine is the extreme opposite. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, so... Um, well, I lived in an estate. Um, I went to private schools. I had a driver picking me up, taking me to school, bringing me back home. We were well sheltered. Um, we pretty much had everything that we needed. Um, my teen, my teenage lives were um, here in Australia, so I just just lived like a normal. Australian teen like I went to school um, I came home I had friends maybe go to the shops shop around um, phone TV social media I think at that time social media just started we had MSN which was like Microsoft messenger, messenger chat thing yeah. yeah we had MSN that time and Facebook had just started as well um I feel like I had a pretty decent teenage life. Oh, okay. Um, I think when I hit like 18, when I was finally legal, I started going to the clubs with my friends, started drinking a little bit. I never smoked, never did any of that kind of stuff, but like um, social drinker and then going to the clubs and having all that fun. That was my teenage. It was pretty like standard. Mm. Is yeah. that what you think? I was never I think, like sent home from school because of fees. Like my reality s is very different from your reality. Your reality. Okay. Yeah. That that's that's all right. I mean, um, no one chooses where mm -hmm. you should be born into. Like mm -hmm. the kind of family mm -hmm. you should be born into. Mm -hmm. If I had the option, do you know where I would have? told god to put me <laughs> so we had no option so yeah, yeah that's life um yeah, the issue is not actually where you are coming from mm -hmm. the issue is where you are going to yeah you know so you don't really have control of where you were born 
And you should always thank God for where you were born. I mm -hmm. am thankful to God for the life experiences I've been through. Mm -hmm. I believe that really made me who I am today. Okay. And I could have been worse if I was born in a in in, in I was born with a silver sp a golden spoon in my mouth, you know. Mm. So um I am grateful and I think you should also be grateful for where you are. Okay. Where you All are right. now. Now yeah. I'm curious to know, you said um during your time you had MSN, the Microsoft Messenger and all mm -hmm. that. Did you have to go to cafe, the internet cafe, to <laughs> chat with a friend, or you had all that in your room? What is internet cafe? Oh I'm my kidding, God. I know what that is, no, but no, we didn't. It's, I had a it's computer. It's a Ghanaian thing. So in Ghana, we we had to go to the internet cafe, mm -hmm. and we had to pay to use the computers. Pay airtime to use the computers yeah. all right so we go in there we pay for one hour 30 minutes or pay for 30 minutes 45 minutes mm -hmm. we go there we chat with friends no i didn't experience that we had oh a computer at home and wi-fi so what year was this i think msn was like 2009 so wow okay yeah i think it was like 12 13 yeah so yeah no we had a computer at home um and we had wi-fi we had one computer so we all have to share like all three of us are you, are you serious <laughs> hey, look at what you're saying In my, we my, only had my, one computer guys from, the whole community have one computer <laughs> <laughs> and you have to okay let me not exaggerate but the entire it could it could be like three communities sharing one internet cafe and in the, okay. in the internet cafe you can get maybe eight computers yeah so imagine the entire community sharing Was it always eight packed? computers of course sometimes you go there it's full mm -hmm. so you have to wait mm. someone goes then it will be your turn. But what were you doing at the internet cafe? That's well, that one, isn't well, it was a it was a thing, you know. It was a it was also a source of fun, fun. Oh, okay. for us because people go in there to play game. Oh, okay. people go in there to chat with friends. Oh, okay. So okay. Uh, I don't know if you remember, there is like you buzz someone on MSN. Okay. You buzz them, so it's more like. Um, it's not a common thing now, but before you used to bass people mm. just to see people who are online and you bass them just to tell them you're also online oh, okay. and you start a chat. So yeah. we did that. Um, that was how we could connect with new people from different schools and all that. Oh, okay. you know? So it was a thing, you know, but yeah. it was expensive on our side mm. and people who were running internet cafe had a good, good income. Because mm. people were coming in. It was a booming business by then. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but wow. then, but, but, when... Okay, so let me just say a little about my dad. Mm -hmm. When when I was below 13 years, mm -hmm. my dad was very rich. Mm. He was, like, rich. Like he had your a early good childhood? Job. Yeah, mm -hmm. my early child, my dad had a good job mm. and all that. So we had the best of everything. I went mm. to the best schools and everything. Mm -hmm. But later on, my dad lost his job. Mm. And when he lost his job, um, we couldn't keep that standard of living again. Mm -hmm. And that's how come I happened to be in a private school, but we couldn't afford the fees. And that's how mm. come I stayed home and mm -hmm. I was hanging mm -hmm. out with the Kubalas and all that. Mm -hmm. But later, when I went to Sukura, mm. my dad still had some source of income. So he had this, he bought us a PC. So we had, oh, a, okay. we had a PC later, maybe I would say around 16 years there, mm. about, we had a PC and it, it didn't have internet, but we could play game. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 But we had a PC for just one year. Oh, okay. And he took it, he took, he took it back and sold it. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah. But that doesn't mean all the um, um, houses or all the homes in Ghana weren't, um, didn't have the same privilege you had. Oh, yeah, of course. Had rich kids in Ghana. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm not the only, yes. well, I wasn't the only privileged yeah. kid yeah. in But that was Ghana. my reality. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, good. So can you tell me um things you missed out? As things a I missed out. As a Christian teenager. Um and things you did not miss out as okay. a teenager. Okay. So And you are happy you didn't miss out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's a lot of questions. Okay, tell me about things you missed um, out as a, things you didn't do. You didn't get opportunity to do as a teenager. Oh, okay. Um I feel like I pretty much did what I wanted to do oh, as wow. a teenager or like a, are we saying as a Christian teenager or just as a teenager in general? Well, I say, weren't you a Christian? Yeah, I was. So as a Christian teenager. Okay. Well, as a Christian teenager, um, I, I would say I wasn't like super strong in my faith. So, so I did, people. I did pretty much whatever you know I wanted what to do. Is? fake christian fake christian yeah i wasn't a fake christian i just wasn't as committed back okay. then so yeah so i did what i what i wanted to do so i don't feel like i missed out on anything if i missed out on anything it's because i didn't want to do it so can you um like so can you tell me what you did mm -hmm. as a teenager me let's let's start by what were the good things, the good habits you portrayed, or the good things you did as a teenager? Then we move on to the bad things you did as a teenager. So tell okay. me, what were the good things you did as a teenager? Um, I feel like the good things I did was I still knew who I am. There wasn't a lot of um peer pressure around me, or even if there were peer pressure around me, I chose what I wanted to do. Does that mean like, like no one could really pressure me to do anything that I didn't want to do. Mm. Does that make sense? Like friends can't push me to drink or friends can't push me to smoke. If I wanted to, I would do it. So Granted, you, I didn't smoke or anything so you didn't like smoke. that. That was a good thing? I didn't smoke. Okay. Yeah. Were um, you, were you, were you a colabone? Were you a stubborn child? Was I a stubborn child? I feel like I wasn't Did you say no to your mom? When she that, says what, you. what teenager doesn't say no? Uh, okay. <laughs> what was that about? Okay. I think every teenager was a little bit stubborn at some point. All right, okay. Yeah. All right. So can you tell me some of the bad things you did? Bad things? Um. See, look, bad is... What's the word? Relative. Relative. What I think is bad, <laughs> someone may not think it's bad. Okay. But, like, I guess had boyfriends <laughs> you had would you boyfriends. say that was bad I had boyfriends that i did everything for okay like i would give them my car and take the train you give them your car and you take a train yeah okay or give them my car and like walk to the train station right. Good time, right. um give them money yeah because i was i had allowance you so had allowance, okay. yeah so i would give them money um See, that's the sad thing. You see, um, we, the husbands, will not enjoy that boyfriend privilege like how some boyfriends in their teenagers enjoy privilege from girls. Okay. Okay. So what's your point? Ah, uh, well. That you're jealous first, that you're jealous that I didn't give you my car and take the train? I never had that opportunity. I didn't get like the privilege well it's because of who you were dating if you had someone that was as dumb as me they would have given you their car and so the way i met you your eyes were already open my you eyes were opened You've learned I your learned. yes yeah i wasn't i knew my self-worth oh, i wasn't okay. doing those things anymore uh, yeah okay all right so um yeah as for me i think um mine is completely opposite to what you had, the mm -hmm. experience you had. Um, as I already said, I was in Banana Inn, went to Sukura, and I went to Dasman Beach Road. For those who know these areas, you can tell me, you know, Banana Inn is a bit, okay, it's chilled. Sukura is where the Muslims are. Mm -hmm. So I grew with the Muslims, for, I think I stayed there for about three years. Mm -hmm. So I knew a bit of Hausa language. Mm -hmm. I could speak Hausa language and it was actually a good time with them. Um, 
I made friends, as I said, with Kobolos. We sometimes go out to sell scraps. Oh, okay. So we, we actually go. I found myself among the Kobolos, not because I wanted to, but it was because my dad took me to an expensive school. And because I was in an expensive school, I couldn't afford the fees. Mm. So they sacked me from school most of the time. Mm-hmm. And when I'm home, I'm bored. And the only people around to play with were the Kobolos because mm-hmm. all the kids that could pay, the, pay their parents could afford their fees were in school. So mm-hmm. I was hanging out with Kobolos. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we play football in the area, we make noise. And other times we go out to Rome. So we're going out to pick scraps. We have a sack, we'll be loading up the sack with scraps and we'll go and sell the scrap. Mm-hmm. And that's how we made some money and we thought that was life. But what did you miss out on? Um, yeah, I missed out on so many things. I missed out on um, quality education at the basic level. Mm-hmm. I missed out on that. I missed out on being able to um, have fun like a kid. Like, you know how you had a PC at home, you could play games. At some point, I knew I had the PC, but I was just brief. Mm-hmm. But a greater part of my teenage life, I didn't play computer games. Mm-hmm. At some point, I even had to stand behind a neighbor's window to watch movie in the night. Wow. So I missed out on all these. I missed out on having a Game Boy. I missed out on buying, like, it wasn't too good, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I missed out on all those things. But the good thing is that because we couldn't afford certain things, I also didn't participate in bad habits mm. i didn't go to the club i haven't been to the club before you know but is that something you feel like you as missed a, out a teenager, on no yeah. i'm just uh, I, I, i'm happy that's what i mean i'm happy i didn't find myself in that category because i couldn't even afford it in the first place Ooh, right? okay so um going to the club I can't even afford it, so I'm not even going. Mm. Smoking. Mm. Bro, I need money to buy food. Mm. How much more buying cigarette? Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, drinking alcohol. Mm. No, nah, I can't even afford it. Mm. So those were the things that, um, the good thing I had, the advantage I had mm. in the kind of um, category I found myself when it comes to friends mm-hmm. and the kind of friends I'm hanging out with. And when I went to Dansman Beach Road, um, I started growing up, you know, um, in Dansman Beach Road, I had to come to a realization that I can't just afford the fees. Mm. My dad keep um, aiming for things he can't afford. Mm. Because for how long will I keep um, and getting deprived from education. Mm. So my mom and I decided that we're not going to listen to my dad, but I would be going to a government school. It wasn't okay. his will. He wanted mm. to fight hard to give me the best education, but it didn't go as he wanted. Mm-hmm. But we had to take the bold step. So without yeah. my dad's consent, my mom took me out of the private school and I went to the government school to write their entrance exams. I passed mm-hmm. and I got admitted in the government school. Okay. And that is how I lived my life as a teenager in junior high school. In Ghana, mm-hmm. we call it junior high school. Over here, you call it year eight. Seven to nine. You're seven, seven to seven nine. Seven to nine, yeah. yeah. So in Ghana, it's JHS one, JHS two, JHS three. Mm-hmm. So I spent my years in JHS in a government school. And mm-hmm. I think it was worth it because the government school I went to, it wasn't just in a government school. Mm-hmm. Although it was a government school, the teachers were strict. Oh, and okay. They gave me some exposure when mm-hmm. it comes to education and that really helped me. So those were the years that my life changed. Wow. So if you were to reverse time, mm. right? Go back in time. Are there certain things I would have done differently as a teenager? Um, or done better? Well, I can't really blame myself because I was a kid and um, hanging out with the Kobolos 
wasn't the best mm. but it's something that i think i couldn't control because okay. i was a kid curious to play i was home doing nothing so okay what about your later years because your mm. early teenage years like you didn't have much yeah. control right yeah. so when you got into like senior high school yeah. and like early yes the uni days yeah, yeah. you had more like autonomy and you yeah. could do yeah. make you know certain decisions That's right. and more so, exposure so so mm, mm, i get what you mean so yeah, yeah um well mm. when i went to dasman beach road mm. i had a different types of a different kind of friends a different mm. category of friends they weren't cobolos they were educated mm. but yet they were exposed Mm. So they were exposed to sexual content. The ladies in the area weren't um, they were moral. They were a bit immoral. So during those years, during those three years in junior high school, I found myself in a different group of friends that were telling me things about sexuality you know they were exploring their sexuality and that's where you see masturbation pornography and all that womanizing H womanizing i didn't humanize <laughs> i didn't humanize the reason why the reason why i didn't humanize was because i was a shy type i mm. was very shy i couldn't even approach a girl Okay. You know, but I could admire girls in my little closet. I could see them in my mom's shop and be eyeing them, <laughs> but I couldn't approach them. All right. But I had friends that were highly sexual. They were immoral, you know. So those three years in junior high school, I can say um, I exposed myself to the, some could come close to me and be playing pornography. And you'd on, watch on their phone and they'll just sit beside me and I'll is that also, in junior high school or high school junior high school oh so that's what i'm saying junior high school because then my mom my mom took certain decisions upon herself so she started as an electrical shop so i used to sit at the electrical shop oh, so okay. things were getting better when i was in junior high school mm -hmm. you know so i sat at the electrical shop and these guys would come sit beside me at the electrical shop mm -hmm. and they'll be telling me about how they've been chasing this girl they tell me about how they went to sleep with a girl so they were exposing me to sexual content and they were playing pornographic content beside me in the shop and because i was a kid i didn't really have the strong moral values <laughs> so i was actually watching and it was, uh, it was i was watching so if i would correct if if so are you trying to say that mm -hmm. you only watched it when people brought it to you yeah i watched it when people brought it to me because i didn't have a phone okay if i had a phone i might have downloaded those and you couldn't too. watch at the internet cafe no i didn't watch it at the <laughs> internet cafe wow internet cafe is a public place you oh, can't okay. watch it there oh okay you know, so i couldn't watch it there but i watch it when my friends come close to me and um the good thing was that i didn't have a phone mm. so i didn't get addicted mm. you know and they were telling me so many things and some of the ladies were also eyeing me here and there oh my gosh uh, did you yeah. have a girlfriend? I didn't have a girlfriend because I was shy, you know? Um, okay. So um, if I had the chance to correct my past, I think I wouldn't expose myself to those contents as a kid. Mm. <clears throat> but a good thing was that when I completed junior high school, most of the senior high education in Ghana are all boarding houses. Okay. So that rescued me. Because mm. I had a school in the Volta region and I had to leave Ghana. So I, so I had to leave Accra. Okay. So I relocated by virtue of going to school. Mm -hmm. And I, I had a three years, it was three years education in the senior mm. high school. So three years this um, um, time of separation. Mm -hmm. I used to come home on holidays, but because they realized I'm not ahead of them in education, mm. they didn't really associate themselves with me yeah and in senior high school i took my study academics really serious so when i come home i usually go to classes mm. and that's how i separated from them and oh, okay that rescued me otherwise yeah you'll not be seeing the louise you are seeing today the intelligence you would have, you would have, seen, you would have seen the louise 
with four babies. Four babies. Four babies. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Sorry. So that, that was it. Yeah. Um, it was a good experience anyway. How about you? Tell um, me, if you were to correct your past, what would you correct? Correct my past. I feel like maybe um, get closer to friends that were already strong in their faith. Yeah. So I could have had a bit more direction in my teenage lives. I feel like a lot of decisions that I made mm -hmm. when I was younger, I could have avoided them. Like get involved with like people that didn't care about me, especially guys that didn't care about me, that just wanted you know, to take advantage of my kindness and, and generosity, I probably would have avoided all that. Yeah. Um, and then also maybe create, I could probably created a stronger relationship with God if I had those type of friends. Um, yeah, I think so. I think that's what I would change. Just yeah, the sure. kind of friends I had. Like I had good friends. I mean, they weren't bad. I had good friends. We were just not on the same page with, like, religion. Like, I had friends that were of completely different religions. You know what I mean? Mm. So, there's no way in growing in faith if you both have different religions. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's something that would have I think it would have helped me be more focused as well. Yeah. Focused in life with my deci decisions and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. So, uh, how would you advise... A teenager in our present world. What would, what advice would you give them? Okay, all right, okay. Let me start off with just giving advice to myself first, okay? Uh, okay. And yeah, let me start giving advice to myself. So, I it just really the advice that I'd want to give to the teenagers really depends on like their goals. Like for example, for me. I've always wanted to be like that family woman, right? I always wanted a family unit, husband, kids, that type of thing, right? So I was always looking for that and I was always like rushing for that and I wasn't patient. You know, I wasn't patient. I wasn't waiting on God's time. I wasn't waiting on God to, you know, show me the person that I'm meant to be with, show me the person I'm meant to start that life with. So advice to my younger self is just be patient. Patience. Be patient. Yeah. Um, trust in God's timing. Mm. Okay. And just believe that that God never disappoints. God never fails. That what you want, your heart desires, God will grant your heart desires. Mm. Might not be when you want it, but it's going to happen. So my advice to my younger self would be be patient, wait on God's time mm. and believe in God and yeah. surround yourself with like-minded people, people that believe in the same faith, people that are working on your faith and work on your faith together. That's what I'll tell my younger self. What I'll tell the youth out there is Whatever you, whatever your heart desires, whatever you want to achieve, whatever you're looking for, be patient. Don't rush and get into like the wrong situations. Don't rush and get into like a relationship with someone that doesn't care about you and they end up with like a, a, a child that you weren't expecting, right? It's a blessing regardless. But just don't rush into things because you want it so badly. Just be patient, focus on yourself, develop yourself um, and pray to God and tell God what you need. And in God's time, you will get those things. So my advice is just be patient, focus on yourself, build your relationship with God. God will help you with discernment. God will help you direct your path. You know, so you know where you're going. God will give you a clear mm -hmm. path, clear direction. So that's what I would say. Just be patient, wait on God, and get closer to God. Yeah, yeah I agree with you, patience, you know. I, it's interesting how when you are a teenager, you're like, I can't wait to grow up. Mm. I can't wait to be, I can't wait to start working. I can't wait to, <sighs> look, they also have their own stress, mm. you know. If you are a teenager, trust me, that's the best years of mm. your life. If you make a good decision in your teenage ages, like teenage years, 
it goes a long way to make your future better. Some mi mistakes you make as a teenager can affect you the rest of your life. Mm. So patience is important. Be patient and enjoy your years as a teenager mm. because no one is going to pay your bills when you are old. Mm. Your mom will ask you, when are you leaving the house? When are you mm. leaving? When are you going to marry? Mm. So enjoy it now. Yeah. Enjoy it now. Make the good make good use of your time you know what and, um, okay yeah, yeah. Go for it. i just want to ask you just a question right um do you think that there's some decisions you made as a teenager or as a young adult that has affected you till now that you can't like yeah that has affected you till now yeah i yes yeah, just, I'm just um, curious. Yeah, let me let me give you an example. I, it's not a big, it's a big thing, but it's not a big thing. Okay. You know, in Ghana, you decide where you go to secondary school. Okay. So before you write the junior high exa exams, you choose the schools you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when, when. I was choosing my schools. I chose St. Peter's to be my first choice. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a decision you make. Mm -hmm. Influenced by your parents. By the end of the day, you make the decision. Okay. Now, as little as that was, it changed my life forever. Okay? Now, I chose St. Peter's as my first choice. When I got home, my dad said, why are you going to Eastern Region? Mm. it's in Kweu. why are you going to Kweu? Mm. in the eastern region i don't know anyone there mm. if you go there you are alone yeah. go to volta region so i can be visiting you every weekend mm. when my dad said that i'm like mm, okay so because i want my dad to visit me every weekend mm. i changed my mind and i made awudome senior high school to be my first choice mm. then i submitted my list of schools to the WAEC guys mm. and process everything. After the process that, I talked to myself, why would I choose Awudoma Senior High School over St. Peter's? Because mm. in Ghana, the schools are ranked. Mm. And if Awudoma Senior High School is somewhere around 190, mm. St. Peter's is within the first 20, first 30 schools. Mm. So why would I do that? After you submitted it. After I submitted it, I mm. regretted making that decision. Mm. And when a grade came, I had 08 as my aggregate. And 08 could have afforded me mm. or could have got me admitted into St. Peter's. Yeah. So I regretted making that decision. Mm. And when I went to Awudome Senior High School, trust me, I met the most godly friends who shaped my life. Because mm. I told you in junior, in junior high school, I had friends that were not teaching mm. me the, the good ways. Mm. But in secondary school, I went into SU. I met good friends that taught me how to pray, how to read the word of God. We went out to evangelize. I wow. became an executive in the SU. Mm. Although the education wasn't strong enough, mm. right? I had the opportunity to study independently. Mm. When I finished, I did not go to a government university, which is like Kane University, Legon, Cape Coast. I couldn't go in there. Why? But I went to All Nations University. Okay. All right. Because I had admission to K University to offer um, geological engineering. Okay. No, so I had admission in mathematics. Oh, okay. And that was my course in K University. And I didn't like that. I wanted to be an electrical engineer. Mm -hmm. So All Nations gave me that opportunity mm. to study there. Mm -hmm. So I knew if I had gone to St. Peter's, I would have associated myself with good intelligence students, mm -hmm. take advantage of the quality education and get K University. But mm -hmm. I would have defined a different course of my life. Mm -hmm. But when I went to All Nations, it was also a godly school. I met godly people. They had so many um, um, Christian syllabus incorporated and Christian activities incorporated in the education system. It also formed part of my spiritual life. Mm. And it was in all nations that I had admission to come to Australia. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. I realized that that decision I took wow. to change St. Peter's to Awudeme Senior oh. High School is what defined the course of my life till now. I don't know how my life would have been if I had gone to King University or St. Peter's, but what I'm saying is that a slight decision can change the direction of your life. Mm. You know, so as a teenager, um, patience is key. Another advice I will give you is the association you find yourself in. You know, evil companies corrupt good morals. And yeah. if you find yourself among friends that are not of the right moral standard, trust me, give yourself time. They will change you. Wow. They will change you. You know, I know now vaping is come on, electronic vapes and all that is come on, clubbing is come on, alcoholism is come on, humanizing, come on. You don't have phones, so you can now go and watch whatever content you want to watch. Trust me, it's not going to help friends, the friends you find yourself in. Choose the friends you want to become. Mm. You know, if you want to be intelligent in class, associate yourself with intelligent people. If you want to become a godly person, associate yourself with godly people. You know, best of mm-hmm. the same feathers flock together. So mm. um, that's the advice I'll give you. Association. Yeah. It's a key role. It's so important, yeah. Yeah, you're right. As a teenager, the people around you have really strong influence on you. Mm-hmm. So you have to choose the right people. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you for watching this second episode um we are up and running as you yeah. can see with our new set up mm-hmm. we, are, we are determined to give you episode upon episode upon episode upon episode back to back, back to so back. stay tuned connect um subscribe to our youtube channel put us on post notification mm. and um once the post comes in you get notified thank yes. you so much for your time thank and you we'll see you in our next episode bye bye